What's up divas and divos? It's your girl April and you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Yes, Real Talk Wednesday. We'll be about to dish out the dirt, the dirt, the dirt and talk some shit and tell people about how they should live their lives and what have you. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? This is what we do on Wednesday. Um, and I might have a beauty video a go up live as well. Um, I try to do two videos on Wednesday now. I've been trying to do this for like the past couple of months because a girl really needs to catch up. Like I'm like not really far behind, but I have so many videos that I have done and recorded and edited over the past month and two months just in general. So I'm really, really trying my best to like catch up. But I want to say this, okay, because I am totally excited and I'm pretty sure some of you, a lot of you may know or are well aware, but a bitch has reached 100,000 subscribers. So last night, which was, well, by the time you guys get this, it'll be two nights later, but on Monday night, MLK Day, Martin Luther King Day, um... I was like on the counter. I just kept refreshing my channel. Not every, not just kept refreshing it, but every few hours. <clears throat> every look, I'm so caught up in it. I'm losing my breath. <clears throat> every few hours, I would check it out, and you know, the subscriber count was going up, and I was just so excited because a lot of people might be like, "Oh, 100,000 subscribers." Let me tell y'all something. I have waited forever to get to 100,000 subscribers, and when I say forever, I don't mean with the same channel. Okay, so like I said, um, this is not my first rodeo with YouTube. This ain't my first channel. This is channel number three. Okay, uno, dos, tres. Channel tres. Okay, and the first channel that I had, I was hacked at like almost 78,000 subscribers, and this was back in. 2005 okay and i was so distraught like i was really 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 upset about it the second channel i started like a few months after august of 2012 that's when my channel was hacked in august of 2012 um and I, I waited a couple months and then I started another channel, okay? But not only was my YouTube channel hacked, my Twitter was a hacked, my YouTube was hacked, my um, online um, business, which was Smooch's Accessories, that was hacked. Um, and amongst something else that I had, oh, Many Faces of Beauties, my blog spot was also hacked. This was all happened to me like overnight, okay? So when I was able to get all three of those items back, I was not able to get YouTube back. Everybody was emailing YouTube, YouTube did not respond, they wasn't helping me, nothing. So I had to start all over again. So when I got here to Arizona, you know, I had my second channel and I was like at 45,000 subscribers. And late, um, like um, 2015, is when my channel, my second channel, which was Muffin Is My Lovers 2012, because it was 2012 when I had to restart, um, it got suspended due to like bad URL links. Um, not on my part, but one of the countries that I dealt with, um, one of the Asian people that I had to the video for, took my URL and was basically pasting it throughout the web and tagging it with all different types of tags. So because it was a hair video, they was tagging it as shoes, purse, and all kind of things. And I used that um, video, you know, that URL was part of YouTube. That was YouTube's URL. So it kept coming back as spam, so they had to suspend my channel. And I had to start all over again. So this was like very early um, 2015. So when I started over for the third time, I really didn't do any videos. I would probably upload a video like once every three weeks. It was like, I wasn't really into it. And plus I had a job and I just really wasn't feeling it anymore like that because you know, I had to start a third time. So I really wasn't pushing out videos like that anymore. Um, so I don't know, like last year is when I started pushing out videos a year ago is like when I really started doing videos and I wasn't even doing videos daily like I do them now there was probably like three times out of the week or maybe two times out of the week that I would do a video sometimes it got to be like once a week I, I, I wasn't really like you know I was coming back but I wasn't really like coming back like that and so but anyway either way here nor there um I'm so happy because um like I said, I waited forever for this shit. Like, I could have been had me um, 100,000 subscribers, like, back in 2012. And maybe back in 2015, too. But, you know, here it is. It's a new year. So, I'm super happy about that. And what's cool about it is it happened on... Um, 
you know, Martin Luther King Day. So a girl is super duper excited about that. And I just want to thank everybody for being my subscriber, my loyal subscribers who have been down with me since day one. Um, because I did actually start doing real talk on my very first channel. On my second channel, I don't remember if I did it or not. I can't really remember. I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Um, back then, you know, I did Real Talk and it was always called Real Talk. <laughs> so, and I stopped doing it for a long time and then I just decided to bring it back because people kept emailing me still. So anyway, either way, either freaking way, um, I want to thank everybody for getting me to 100,000 subscribers. So I cannot wait to get my plaque. I'm excited about that. I really wish I would have had the gold play button by now. But you know what? I feel like this. Some people would have came back. They would have been like, you know what, fuck that. They done hacked my channel. I'm not doing this no more. And the second time around, they would have been like, fuck you. I'm definitely not coming back. So let me tell you something. This is the third channel. And I'm going to be just, just quite honest with you. Is somebody take my motherfucking channel right now? <laughs> I don't think I'll come back. I really, I don't, I don't think I will come back. Yeah. I would just find something else to do with my time. But anyway, so yes. So thank you everybody for getting me to 100,000 subscribers. I, I'm, man, I'm really excited. Like I've been waiting for this for like ever, man, forever. So I'm like super excited and I'm, I'm freaking happy as fuck. Also, gotta send a shout out to my girl. Um, who sent me a nice card in my post office box and it was a nice long letter and I knew who it was from the moment she sent the letter but I had to share this with you guys because OMG I love Wonder Woman and I did not know that they had these at the post office it's a Wonder Woman postage stamp I hope you guys can see that it's so freaking cute so it's a Wonder Woman postage stamp and I was really excited about that she just put it in there for me when I opened it up I was like oh so I was so excited about you. I'm not mailing anybody a letter with this. This is from, for me to keep. Plus, I'm going to also peel off the one that's on the envelope. Oh, well, this is my post office box, so you guys can see it because it's on my thing. But I'm also going to peel off the one that's on the envelope because it's different. So you see that? So I'm really excited about that. So yeah, I don't know why I was trying to hide the um the address like it ain't on the internet. But so yeah, guys, so excited about that. I know you guys are like, okay, bitch. But Bridget, I love you, and I will call you this week. I promise, I will call you this week. Um, because we always converse back and forth with one another through YouTube. So I've been waiting for her to send me her phone number, and I never got the email. But anyway, yes, I love her letter. I really, really do like her letter. Now on to the next thing. So, I did get a lot of responses or comments in my email. Oh, not my email, excuse me. Um, not my email, but my um, Instagram. Because last Wednesday, remember, I did get to go for my keloid scar. So, uh, I took a picture, and I did have a Band-Aid over it at the time. And let me tell you something. So, when I went in there, I wasn't scared. I was just, I was so excited. You know, for one, I had already missed the appointment the day before because she said I was over 15 minutes late, but whatever. So, um was it the day before it was two days after but um i was so excited to get there that i was i was there before the time but um the nurse brought me into the back um this time when i went it was um crowded in the waiting area but you know i, I really didn't care about that so i went back with the nurse and i'm into the room where they was going to examine me and you know she asked me about it and i told her how i got it and for those of you who don't know or cannot remember this was not from like an, a, an accident or anything. It was like a tiny, tiny, tiny pimple. Like, you know, like how a heat bump would be it was that small. And I cannot really remember if I um, popped it or not, but all I know is over the years it has grown to be this size. So, um, and there are days when I wake up or when I'm just laying there or I'm just, just here in general, there are days when I can feel like a, sh like a, piercing pain like a very piercing pain from it and even when um sometimes when my shirts lie on top of it it hurts and it irritates it so that is why you don't see me wear like a lot of necklaces the only necklace that you'll see me wear is this one right here which i love and sometimes i i am very self-conscious of it and i think it has to do uh, with a lot of people always ask me questions like what happened um 
Is that a scar? Where'd you get your scar from? Or did you have a tracheotomy? And tracheotomy is not right here, but a lot of times people, a lot of it has to do with people asking me what happened to you. But, and you know, that's where I start to feel insecure about our self-conscious. And a lot of times I just be wanting to say none of your fucking business. God damn. Do you even know me like that to be asking? Um, because if you knew me, you would know how I got it. So that's where I start feeling self-conscious. So anyway, I explained to the nurse what happened in like, Five minutes later, the doctor came in, and he was really, really cool, and he was, you know, he said, he, he, he was like, so we're going to treat your keloid, and I was like, it's not a keloid, because this is how I started the conversation, because in my mind, in my mind, and I always thought that a keloid was like, if you had a scar, you know, it was a, a scar from something like an accident, or you know, if you cut yourself, that's where the keloid came from, from an accident, like, you know, a cut. And he had to break it down to me. There are several different types of keloids. For one, there is the one like I was thinking of where, you know, you've had an accident or you just, you know, your skin has been cut. That was one of them. Then he had um, the one where it, it, it's um, hyperactive keloid. It was another name for it, but it's, it's basically what he said. It's a hyperactive keloid and it's caused from trauma. And I said to him, okay, well, that's not what I have. He said, no, you have a hyperactive keloid caused from trauma. Now I was, I always assumed like keloids don't grow because you get them as a scar and it stays that size and eventually over time it flattens out. And that's basically what happens, you know what I'm saying? Cause I've had one, I've had a couple and over time they flatten themselves out and you don't even see them anymore. So that's why I assumed that this was not a keloid um, because it just kept growing and growing. So he told me it is a keloid. It's there's different types and it's a hyperactive keloid to where it's caused from trauma. So then I had to explain to him, I didn't have trauma. This was a pimple, like a pimple, the size of a heat bump. And he said, it's trauma. I never knew any kind of bump to be trauma, but as he explained to me, it all depends on your skin. So it's trauma to my skin because I have an overgrowth of scar tissue, which I've already was told that before, but I have a horrible, like a drastic overgrowth of scar tissue. So the way that they can treat it is when he came, um, he came in and then the nurse came back after him. She came in with like this big can. It was a, like a spray can. It looked like an aerosol can. And she had a, some cloth, a cloth wrapped up with, um, four needles. She opened up, it was four needles. So he explained to me that there are um, three options to do. And I was thinking that one of the options he was going to say is to laser treat it because I have known, um, one girl that had the same spot here as a keloid and she had a laser treatment. Not only that, but one of the young ladies on Instagram told me that she had one or someone she knew had one, but someone also told me on Instagram that they had one and they had a laser treated and it just came back over time. And the young lady that I knew, white girl, she had one right here too. And she had a laser treatment and it came back too. So I was like, I don't even want that. That's one of the options. This is what I'm saying to myself. So he didn't even bring up the option as it being an option as getting a laser treatment. It was one that you can freeze it and it's several treatments. Two, you can get injections and those are also several, several treatments or three, I can go onto surgery and they would have to cut it off and I would have to go and rate, I would have to have radiation treatment. Um, yeah, radiation. So I'm like thinking, okay, radiation, am I going to lose my motherfucking hair? I mean, I know I don't wear my hair out anyway, but a bitch don't want to lose her hair. But, you know, it is what it is because I just really am tired of this. So he said the surgery is, will still leave me with a scar. It'll leave me with a line. And I'm, I'm, I don't care about a line because regardless, it's going to be a mark there. Okay. But it could be to where it'll come back again if it's cut off because you know my skin heals like that so he said what's gonna happen is this is what's what they want to happen first they want you to go through the treatments and once you go through the treatments if the treatments don't work then they're going to want to do the surgery so I was like okay well, what is the treatments? He said, well, normally what he likes to do is he likes to freeze it and then inject me. And I cannot remember for the life of me what he put into my skin, but I was like, so wait a minute, you want to freeze me? You want to freeze, freeze this? 
And he was like, you can either do just the needles or you can do just the um, freezing part or you can do them both. I said, well, what do you suggest? Because you're the doctor. He wanted to do both the freezing and the ejections because if you freeze it, it won't hurt as bad once he punctures it with the needle. So I was like, okay. So what, then what he told me is once he punctures it with the needles, it's, my skin is going to scab over. And so when he said it's going to scab, I'm thinking of it's going to be like this big scab and it's going to peel off. That's not the, that, no, that's not even the case. I'll have to go back February 4th. So anyway, he takes this aerosol can. He's like, it's going to start stinging because it's really, really cold. It's 300 degrees under 300 degrees. Okay. So I'm like, all right. He said, and if it gets too cold and you can't take the pain, just let me know and we'll stop. And for a few minutes and then we'll go back and I said okay so I allowed him to, to spray the entire thing and it did start stinging but it was more or less to the end and he was like it's only a tiny bit left you can take it and I surely did so I sat there and then he got the needles out now the needles were like you know like a needle now this part right here is more raised like you know what I'm saying like it's more this is where it started growing from so it's more raised and it's it's thicker skin so it hurt but it didn't hurt as bad when he stuck the needle in it he, and then but when he went down here where it's a lot more closer to you could feel my bone it felt like it just I could feel it going into my chest cavity like it felt like it hit my chest cavity bone like I was like oh my god it hurts and then it started bleeding it's never bled before because I've never got cut there so it's never had an issue to bleed he didn't say it was gonna bleed that's why I started scabbing so now if you see it's dark it's not even a scab like what I thought of a scab I was thinking of like you know when you fall down you get a cr you as a kid or as an adult and your scab gets really crusty and hard that's what I'm thinking was gonna happen but it didn't just like a little bit of skin peeled off but it got so sore that day it, it was swollen you know what I mean and I was like oh my god he made it look worse and so now to me in my eyes like I feel like it looks worse because okay it's just a little bit darker but it wasn't dark like that it was just more or less like a pinkish color either way it's just pissing me off and I just cannot wait till it's all over and done with you know what I'm saying so I don't go back for another treatment until February 4th and I'm just like hoping that it just I hope it just I don't know I really hope that it doesn't take as long I will tell you this though for me just touching it and it probably doesn't look like it to you guys because you can't feel it you can just see it and of course but it has flattened itself a, um, a lot um, it was so much more raised, you know what I mean? It was more raised, and now it's flatter. When I touch it, it feels like it's almost hollow in the middle, you know what I'm saying? So, I guess it takes its time to work, which I'm excited about it. But, the one thing I hate is that it's just right there, and... I mean, if I wanted to, I could wear a necklace, but it would start to irritate me, so I would have to put, like, a Band-Aid, one of those thin strip Band-Aids, and then wear a necklace, so that way I wouldn't feel so self-conscious. But either way, that's how my treatment went, and I'm just really excited to get it over and done with. So, yeah, in case you guys are wondering, that's what I've been through. Um, um, and other than that, okay, so, yeah, my love life is great. I don't know if that's what you want to call it. Um, you know, I converse with my husband every day he calls me every single day and we're always on the phone with each other and we love each other so much it's just ridiculous like seriously um it's totally ridiculous how much you can love somebody especially when you've been through a lot with them and you just find yourself like lost without them and it's not that I'm lost but I know that the part of me that I love the most is not the here. And it really sucks because, I, like I said to you guys before, I should have never, I wish I would have never got divorced. I think I had a lot of bitterness in me, a whole lot of bitterness in me. And that was like the main reason for my divorce. And um, he always says to me, I don't consider you to be my ex-wife. You're my wife still. And so it's, to him, it's like we never got divorced. And that's cool because... I could, I could dig it. Like, I respect that. Because I always did call him my husband, too. So, but it was like, to me, it wasn't the worst mistake of my life. Maybe it was. I don't know. I just, you know, sometimes you have to just think about what you do and just think about it for the long run. And 
I think that was like um, a really, really like quick decision that I did. I really didn't think about it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought about it, but I was really bitter. And on top of that, like it was when I was with somebody else and I shouldn't have. But either way, it's crazy when you know that there is somebody that really, really loves you. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, you know what? It's, it's not even worth, it's not that it's not worth me trying to find love. Um, but what for? When I know the person that really loves me is right here and I'm right here. So it's like, just let him get his shit together and, and, and do what he needs to do. And then you just, you know, you guys work on being with each other. And that's cool with me because that's who I'd rather spend like the rest of my life out with, um, the rest of my years with, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just who I would rather focus my life to be with as with as in a relationship you know what I mean I don't really feel like I need to give anybody else that time especially if I'm not going to be responsive to them I'm, I'm not going to be open to the um, idea of having a new relationship with someone especially when I feel like everybody that I have tried to date after him not everybody not like I'm some kind of hoe or anything you know what I'm saying <laughs> but you know those who I did try to date um I always kind of compared them to him and, and they never like lived up to his standards especially in the boudoir so a girl was like yeah tongue smacks girl just wait for your husband and just get remarried to him but yeah so you know i'm like i'm super happy about that like because what a waste of money that divorce paper was i still owe the court some more money for that shit I wonder if y'all going to give me a discount if I get remarried. But anyway, so yes, um, other than that, ain't really much going on in my life. I'm chilling, got my blonde wig on, you know what I'm saying, loving it. You know what I'm saying. And she tongue smacks. If you guys are wondering about this wig, I did make it, so I'll post the link below. But... Let's get into this real talk because I got some good ones for you guys. Always got some good ones. But if you have a real talk that you want to send me because you, you got some shit going on in your life, then you can send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure that you put in the subject line of real talk, okay? So that way that I know it's real talk. If you want to change the names of your characters in the email saying like, your name is April, but you don't want nobody to know that shit, then you can change it to Mary. Just please let me know like names have been changed or what have you and shit like that. But yes, and other than that, sometimes I am not delayed on real talk. That's why I try to do three. I used to only do one, but now I do three because I'll be having to try to catch up and shit. But yeah, so that's basically it. And on that note, let's get into real talk, okay? Okay, so I like this one because did she put it big letters like that y'all probably can't even see it but the, the the font is big enough and that's what i'm talking about because the bitch can't see for shit so let's get on with it hi april i just want to start off by saying i love you and i've been watching your videos since your first channel you're a beautiful person and i live for the real talks but i need your help this will be very long Laugh out loud, sorry. I've already changed the name so you can call me Lisa. I've been dating a guy named Ryan on and off since I was 15. I lost my virginity to him. But anyways, I'm 22 now and this summer I found out I was pregnant. When did she send me this damn? She sent this to me, okay, so she sent this to me in um, the end of December. Here's, um, I, um, I found out I was pregnant. Although I was afraid, I decided to keep the baby. Here's where things go left. I tell Ryan that I'm expecting and he completely loses it. He told me he didn't want a baby, that he hated me, said I was the worst thing that ever happened to him, and that he hopes me and my baby dies. Completely broke my heart in that very moment. I lost all the respect that I had for him, but that wasn't going to stop me from having my child. 
a little back story. When I was 18, I was also pregnant by Ryan, but ultimately decided to terminate the pregnancy, a decision that I think about every day. It hurts, but I know I wasn't ready. During my most recent pregnancy at around seven weeks, I started experiencing complications and my doctor later found out that I had an atopic pregnancy. Baby starts growing in fallopian to a serious medical emergency that some women can still die from. My world crashed because I was told I have no possibility of having the baby. I go through countless doctor visits, two ER visits, and having two doses of chemotherapy, a topic pregnancy treatment. While all this is happening, I have no contact with Ryan. Fast forward months later, I informed him of what happened and he apologizes and tells me how bad he feels about how he treated me and how he wants me back. But I started dating a new man named David that absolutely adores me and treats me like the queen that I am. Call me dumb, but I still have love for Ryan. April, should I go back to Ryan or give David my all? Hell. So let's see, what was her name? Cause we about to go, um, we go about to tell her about herself, okay. Did she say Lisa? Yes, Lisa. So Lisa has been dating Ryan. She, since she was 15, she lost her virginity to him. She's 22, which means they've been dating for seven years. She already was pregnant before at the age of 18 and got an abortion, I think, right? Yes, um, she terminated the pregnancy. Then when she got pregnant at the age of 22 this past summer, did Ryan tell her that he, that she is the worst thing that ever happened to him, okay? Um, how he hated her, told her that he hopes her and the baby dies, okay? And that broke her heart. So she had an atopic pregnancy. She wasn't gonna go to full term with that baby. And yes, women can die from atopic pregnancies. So basically, his little wishes, they damn near, basically, Basically, all the way, almost 50% of it came fucking true, all right? I wish a motherfucker would tell me how much you hate me, how much I'm the worst thing that ever happened to you, and how you hope me and my baby dies. That is the worst thing that you could say to anybody, especially somebody that you've been with for years. And then now that you have gone through this, you haven't been in contact with him since, and you told him about the pregnancy and the complications that you was having, and so forth and so forth, and what happened, and he gonna go apologize to you, and he wants to be with you again? Girl, please, you with some Somebody else that treats you like a queen. Why the fuck would you want to leave someone that treats you like a queen to go back to someone that treats you like a motherfucking peasant? All right? I'm just saying. I'm not about to go to no nigga that treats me like trash, slave, shit on the street, some type of whoremonger, thoughty thought, and a peasant from someone that treats me like a queen. Let me tell you something. What if you was to get pregnant next week, next month, a couple months from Ryan, from now to Ryan? Do you really think that he would give a fuck, two fucks about it? Okay, he really didn't get two fucks about you, the first baby, because if he really cared that much, he wouldn't allow you to talk, um, he wouldn't allow you to terminate the baby. He would at least try to talk you out of it. But I'm pretty sure that nigga wasn't standing there trying to talk you out of it. He probably was standing there with your hand at the abortion clinic talking about, come on girl, let's go get this done so we can turn up later. And then when you got pregnant, uh, what, four years later, four or five years later, four years later, the nigga was like, I hate you, I hope you and the baby die. You know what I'm saying? You're the worst thing that ever happened to him so if you're the worst thing that ever happened to him why the fuck is he still fucking you fucking you raw okay without a concept and then still with you for seven fucking years so if i'm the worst thing that ever happened to you dude you're the worst thing that ever happened to me okay why the fuck should i be even wasting my time on you i'm sorry but a bitch like to be treated like a queen okay and um some niggas don't know how to treat women like queens however we don't always have to be treated like queens but please treat us with some type of respect and morale nigga act like you got some motherfucking sense up in this bitch, okay? Don't think that it was just my fault. Here's the thing. This is the part that I fucking hate the most. Dudes, men, Negroes, motherfucking crackers, whoever the fuck you are, y'all get females pregnant and then y'all blame them when they end up pregnant. If you fucking a bitch, a lady, a female, a girl, a woman without a condom, and then you coming up inside of her, what the fuck do you think the outcome is going to be? She either going to get pregnant or she not going to get pregnant. However, if she get pregnant... Motherfucker, you can't get mad because you didn't strap it the fuck up. You didn't even have the decency to pull the fuck out. And if you did pull out, nigga, you didn't pull out in time with your fucking pre ass, okay? So, I can't understand why men get upset about the shit. You played a huge part in this shit, too. So, don't act like you wasn't there, motherfucker. You was there. Nigga, you was the one on the top stroking, okay? Don't act like you wasn't there. Matter of fact, it's your shit that got me fucking pregnant. So, if anybody should be motherfucking mad, it should be me, okay? Let's be real about this shit. 
Let's just be real. I'm just saying. Now, on top of that, the worst part of it is, you did you did you really just say you hold me and my motherfucking baby die? Okay, bitch. Now you acting like a girl. You really up in your feelings. You acting real petty and bitchy. But you did you just motherfucking say you hold me and my motherfucking baby die? I wish a motherfucker would say I wish you and your baby die. First of all, um. You ain't about to tell me you hate me and I'm the worst thing that ever happens to you. Because you, if you was to say you hate me, that might be the first thing that you say. You hate me. Okay. That's me. After you tell me you hate me, I'm sitting there like, did this nigga just say he hate me? Cause then I start turning up my lips when I get real mad. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, did this? Did you fuck? Did you just fucking say you hate me? Cause then I start off real calm, like, oh word, you fucking hate me. All right. But if the nigga came out of his face with the second phrase and was like, um, you the worst thing that ever happened to me, nigga, you not about to get to the third phrase and say, I hope you and your baby die. Because I'm not even going to allow you to get to that point. Because once you say I'm the worst thing that fucking happened to you, nigga, I'm going to pounce on you like a tiger in the jungle, ready to fucking catch an antelope and fuck your ass up. Okay? You ain't about to tell me how I'm the worst thing that ever happened to you. You ain't even about to get to that point where you're going to say, I hope you and your baby die. Because as soon as you say, I'm the worst thing that ever happened to you, nigga, I'm pouncing on you. Okay? I'm pouncing on you. Okay? I'm going to be like the king of the motherfucking jungle, the lion king up in this bitch. You're going to think I had on one of those big Mufasa motherfucking wigs on because my hair going to poof the fuck out. The spikes is going to stand up on my bag. A bitch going to morph into some type of animal that you ain't never even seen before. And I'm going to pounce on your ass. I wish a motherfucker would tell me I'm the worst thing that ever happened to them. That is not even just an insult. That is like a dig in the grave. Did you just cut my throat without the motherfucking knife? Stab me in my chest and really try to fucking insult me and hurt my motherfucking feelings i'll be damned if i let anybody hurt my feelings however since you let him say this shit to you and he said he hates you you're the worst thing that ever happened to him he hopes you die and he hopes your baby die that's four things Bitch, you be stupid if you take him the fuck back. Now, you go ahead from being a queen to a motherfucking peasant. Because I've seen a lot of people be de-fucking-throned de off their motherfucking chariot. And be fucking thrown into the fucking, um, into the peasantry. And I'm pretty sure that you don't want to leave the kingdom to live with the motherfucking peasants. Because that shit is not cool. That's like living from the riches. That's like yo Beyonce ass going from living like Beyonce to living like good times from back in the days. Okay? Well, y'all got to scrape and save and can't afford a fucking can of spam. I be damned if I'm about to let a nigga fucking treat me like the queen on the throne. And then I leave this nigga that treat me like some real shit to go whine and that. that. Listen, it's either you going to choose... And I know Red Lobsters ain't one of the highest fucking restaurants on the chain level. But I'm going to go with something that everybody know that, you know, I'm pretty sure you can get a really good meal there. And it's a little bit pricey, but it ain't too pricey. Okay. However, you're going to go from Red Lobsters to White Castles or from Red Lobsters to McDonald's. Either one is cheap. White Castles, McDonald's is cheap. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking White Castles is a little bit cheaper than Mickey D's. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because the burgers is like yay big. Like some motherfuckers dicks. Little, little, little. <laughs> but anyway, you so you're going to go from Red Lobster's, bitch, to White Castle's. You're going to go from the Ritz Hotel, bitch, to Motel 8. Let's not talk about this no motherfucking more, okay? I mean, I'm just saying. I really don't want to talk about this shit. No motherfucking more. So you're going to go from Gucci... To fucking, um, Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay? Like, um, yeah. That's not working out for me. So you figure that shit out, Lisa, yourself. Because you asking the wrong motherfucker for advice with that shit right there. You think about that shit because he told you he hoped you die. That's the worst thing you could ever wish on any fucking body is to hope you die. I mean, let's not... Okay, so yeah. Maybe I have said that before, too. About that motherfucker that just... Well, it ain't just. It been since May that I put his fucking trifling ass out. But I wish that motherfucker died, too. All right? But I got many reasons. And you know what? You got many reasons to wish Ryan's ass death too. But we don't we don't want karma. So and we're gonna be the bigger people. So being the bigger person means, bitch, moving the fuck on and losing communication. 
where you fucked up at was telling that nigga what the fuck happened. Why would you, you know what, if it were me and I was having complications and shit for my pregnancy, I'm not telling this nigga. You just wish, wish death on me and my child. Why the fuck should I tell you that, oh, my baby's dead and I almost died? Why? I, I don't give a fuck about your concernment. I'm not even, I'm not fucking with you anymore. Nigga, you better hope you still breathing. I'll call my brothers on you and have them fuck your ass up. So I won't even have to tell you. I, that's where you was wrong at. Why the fuck would you even tell him? Do you really think, like, was you was you trying to gain some points? Was you trying to see if he was concerned? Bitch, who gives a fuck if he was concerned? He wasn't that concerned when he wished death on y'all. So why the fuck would you want to tell him what happened? He didn't care when he said that shit, so what made you think that he cared now? And though he apologized, who gives a fuck about his apology? Tell him to stick that shit where the sun don't fucking shine. Like, seriously. He wouldn't have even got the time of day for me after that. I wouldn't have told him shit, okay? He would have had to wonder for the rest of his motherfucking life, I wonder how my baby's doing. I would have been like, and then he would have got in contact with me a, like, you know, a year later. Well, how's the baby? What? Click. I still wouldn't have told the motherfucker, keep wondering. Keep motherfucking wondering, okay? Keep motherfucking wondering. That's how I feel about the shit. I ain't telling nobody shit. You you tell me that you hate me and that I'm the worst thing ever and you wish death on me. Nigga, you could kick rocks with no shoes on, okay? For real. Wearing socks. I'm just saying. So let Lisa know how y'all feel. So let's move on to the next. Hi, April. Thanks for taking the time to read this email. I thoroughly enjoy Real Talk. My favorite was when you sent your ex to prison. Well, which one? Because I ended up sending my ex-husband, who's going to be my sooner husband, be um, to prison too. Like, because you, you ain't, we ain't about to be fighting up in here with your drunk ass. Um, but you probably was talking about this one because I didn't really mention that too much in my last ones. So I saw your Christmas decorations from Facebook photo. Just wanted to say your house in Arizona is cute as fuck. Well, thank you. Uh, my dream house. You have a real talent and gift from God to do what you do. Well, you know what, my dear? I thank you so much. Um, I really do. I just work with what I have. I may not have much, some people, but I'm happy from what I do have. Because it might be not much, like I said, but it's a lot to me. I am contacting you about a situation with a woman I met online. She lost her mother June 2016 and her spouse last Christmas. She said the loss of her, mo of her wife... Oh, her, her, okay, when she said spouse, for some reason I was thinking of automatically of a man. Um, she, and she lost her spouse, meaning her wife, last Christmas. So this is a lesbian relationship, in case you guys are trying to figure it out. She said the loss of her wife is easier to bear. She said his kids hated her. Her kids hated her. And she was miserable. It's the death of her mother, her best friend, and Rock that has tormented her this Christmas. From our first conversation, she talked about her deceased wife in the present tense and her mother. Her conversation was saturated with bountiful stories from the past concerning those two people. I quickly understood this woman is not over these painful astratus, astra, um, what is she? Oh, okay. Painful, because I had lost my place. Um, I'll quickly understand that this woman is is not over these painful atrocities and maybe just needs a friend. So I began to share my internet dating stories with her as she talked about her wife, thinking this is how we are going to roll. Cool. However, when I talked about my online dating stories, she suddenly turned into a monster. I was thoroughly confused. She just spent the entire hour telling me her ex-wife was the love of her life at one time. Why on earth would she think that would turn somebody on? After she talked about her wife, it was my turn to share, and I shared a recent experience. She asked me how the girl looked. I replied, stunning. And April, what did that... And April, why did I say that? She hit the motherfucking roof. She said, well, send me a motherfucking picture of the bitch you think is fucking stunning. I was like, wow, is this the same nice soft-spoken girl that was on the phone three minutes ago? I sent her a picture of the girl and of course she tore her apart. She said her face looks like a horse's ass. 
So after our conversation, I felt heavy. I wasn't interested. I didn't want to chat with her that night anymore. Well, she got back online after an hour after we got off the phone and sent me a chat. I was still dealing with the angry, jealous outburst and her unfair, inconsiderate ways. April girl, what the fuck? What happened there? Is she trying to be Queen Diva or did she like me? If she liked me, then why fill the conversation up with stories about her deceased wife? Signed, confused as fuck. Shit, I was confused. So basically, my dear, we're going to just call you Gabby. Gabby met some woman online and the woman was basically sharing her past experience. Her mom passed away, her wife, ex-wife passed away, or her wife passed away, what have you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Gabby shares some, you know, some of the same stories. Not the same stories, but she just was sharing stories as well. Just past experiences. And so once she, she started sharing her experiences, the young lady was basically, seemed like she was getting very defensive and so forth. And then dis dis disrespected and disrespectful. Now you want to know, did the girl like you, Gabby? Seemed like she likes you and she didn't want to hear about it. Some people take, um, some people tend to get jealous, even if they barely know you, even from online. They seem to get a little bit jealous and try to figure out people um or some people also try to how do i put it like she seemed like she liked you however she didn't know how to basically come at you to tell you she liked you and so in some people's eyes catching feelings and getting overprotective and just seeming like very kind of harsh towards another person's ex or stunning it kind of makes them really aggressive. I mean, if someone, if if a guy was to tell me, like, you know, his ex-girlfriend was stunning, I probably would take it the wrong way, too. Like, you know, because I don't really want to hear that shit. Like, if the bitch is so fucking stunning, why the fuck is you trying to talk to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you telling me for? Like, I'm, I mean, but she did ask. She did ask you what the girl looks like. However... I don't really think that she expected you to say that she was stunning. She probably expected you to downplay the girl as well, being that you weren't with her anymore. Because that's normally what people do in relationships or past relationships. They downplay their ex. Like, oh, that nigga ain't shit. Fuck him. Drunk ass. And this is me downplaying my ex-husband. Because in reality, I'm going to be real with you. I was downplaying him too. You know, I was dissing him, talking about he was a drunk, how he ain't shit, how I was tired of him. I mean, and these are true feelings and these are actually real facts he was a drunk and i was tired of him and his bullshit and i mean the part where he ain't shit that really isn't so you know what i'm saying because he's not that type of person he really is a good great person you know he just had a problem but we seem to tend to downplay people when we when we're not interested in, in them anymore or we've had a bad breakup we just dis the shit out of them and I think that's what she was looking for you to do even though she herself wasn't downplaying her girlfriend I mean why would you downplay someone that's deceased that would just be totally disrespectful so yeah I mean even though you don't want to hear about how much she was in love with her ex with her wife that passed away it kind of makes it a little bit easier because her wife is no longer available meaning she's not in the picture anymore she's passed away so to me if someone was to say to me yeah I really loved him um, or excuse me him I really loved her she um she was my everything she was stunning she was beautiful etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know she she passed away i really i wouldn't really get upset about it because there's no worries i mean not saying that all oh, the bitch is dead like no worries but i mean there really isn't any worries she's passed away and if you if she were alive you wouldn't be telling me this i'm pretty sure you'd probably still be with her so because she's passed away we, we we have a different outlook a different concept of things you know what i'm saying we we look at the person differently like wow okay you know she's been through something tragic she really did care for this person they passed away 
And I understand, you know, they, they really love this person, but okay. But here it is, you're telling her about someone that is not dead, and that's just so fucking stunning, and you're sending pictures, and then she's, she's catching feelings, so she's jealous. Like, you can't really get jealous of, I mean, you can if you want to, but you, it's a little bit more harder to get jealous of someone that's passed away versus somebody that's still alive and that you can go back to any given moment. You know what I'm saying? So, she did like you. She just went about it the wrong way. However, my thing is this. Stay the fuck away from that bitch because I'm not saying she's crazy. She just doesn't really know how to handle things. Plus, she's lost somebody, which is very recent. It's a year ago. A year ago is not that long. And she's probably still harboring feelings for her. And, of course, you cannot help that. And I'm not knocking her for it because the way she, you know, lost the love of her life is by death, which sucks for anybody. So, you know, she really does care for this person. And I guess she just wanted to share that with you. However, I'm pretty sure she did not expect you to tell her that the bitch that you used to fuck with was stunning. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, if a man was to tell me that his ex was stunning, I would probably be like, well, what the fuck you telling me for? Why don't you go back to that bitch? But if he said she was stunning and she passed away, I'll be like, I'm sorry to hear that. And I wouldn't feel no type of way about it. However, if you kept saying to me how she was stunning and beautiful and she passed away, then after a while I'm going to be like, listen, motherfucker, you want to go and join her? Because it's not a problem if you want to join her. Okay? But... The whole online dating thing, I don't fuck with it anymore. You know, I had my experience with that, and it wasn't that great. You know, I met white boy, and he was really cute and nice, but, yeah. His whole persona about people's car interior, like, if their car is dirty, that thing that, that shows him about the person. Though my inside of my car wasn't dirty, but his microwave was filthy nasty. And I just wasn't feeling how he was talking about his son's mother, you know, in front of me. Like, if you could talk about her like that in front of me, you barely know me, then I can only imagine what you would have to say about me. So, with that being said, I'm really not going to deal with you. And on top of that, you kept giving me little hints, like, when we move, when I move in. We, like, nigga, ain't nobody say you was moving up in this motherfucker. You crazy. So, I mean, I don't do the online dating thing anymore I mean I don't have to but and I don't want to if I chose to I just wouldn't I mean I've had my fair share of that and yeah tongue smacks it wasn't for me me personally Gabby I would just not even chat with her anymore there's always a block button and I'm pretty sure that's available with any chat online dating room you may want to just um really filter the young ladies who um you know, message you. Looks are deceiving, honey child. Looks are motherfucking deceiving. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is going to be the last one of the evening. Hello, April. I love your videos and watch them frequently. After watching a Real Talk video, I thought I could reach out for some advice. I have already changed the names in the story. My name is Naya, or Nia, and I was dating a young man named Andrew. Andre. Throughout our three-year relationship, oh, I was dating a young man named Andrew, Andre. Throughout our three-year relationship, he abused me every day, more than once a day. It was never a day that he did not hit me. I loved his family, and his family loved me, and my family loved him as well. No one knew what was going on, but a few mutual friends. We had only, he, a mutual friends. We had two, what? Mutual friends. I had only hit him back once because that day I had built up the courage to hit him. I am only 5 feet tall and only weigh 130 pounds. He is about 6'3", very muscular and weighs about 245 pounds. He was also cheating on me and I didn't do anything throughout the whole relationship. I know you may ask if I did anything for him to hit me or cheat, but no, he would hit me for reasons like being in the shower and not hearing my phone ring. Just giving you an example so you can get the gist of the situation. He was crazy, but he would apologize and cry for me not to leave every time. Well, April, he passed away. It's been about five months now, and it hurt me so bad even though he did what he did to me. Well, my problem is now everyone around me, including my mother, are still mourning his death. 
and so am I. But this is the first time in my life I can actually go to sleep and walk through life without looking over my shoulder or even breathe again. I even felt like I stopped loving myself while he was in my life. I do not wish death upon anyone and I hate that he had to go. But it's wrong that I feel as though... Wait, what? Oh, but is it wrong that I feel as though I can have my life back again? And even though it's the result through his death, I can have my life back again? And how do I deal with the people around me who are saying how much of a good person he is when he when they didn't even know his dark side? I won't ever bring it up because I feel he's gone now. Why bring it up? But I feel scared to even move on or give someone else a chance because I don't want them to be like him. I feel traumatized and the bad part is I want to talk about it and get help, but I feel like it would be throwing dirt on his name to the people who don't know him or who didn't know about what he was doing to me. I know this may be a surprise, but I'm only 20. I was with him since the age of 16. Wow. See what I'm saying? You don't wish death on nobody. You see what I'm saying? Why is everybody dying? Like, this is like not a good day. Like, I just, I didn't even pick these randomly. I just, like, went by the dates. This is, like, ridiculous with the death thing. But, okay, so. First of all, Nia is 20 years old. She was dating Ryan for three years. And for them three years, every day he beat on her. Now, I don't know how possible that is to abuse someone every day. But you know what? I wasn't in your shoes, so I really couldn't say. However, being in an abusive relationship is a horrible thing and a lot of times people will be like oh girl you need to just leave him alone you just need to leave him alone that wouldn't be me that wouldn't be me but you know something you can't really say that wouldn't be you until you put yourself in that person's shoes okay everybody has a different situation just like with me i have been in a domestic violence relationship and i can say to people nowadays like that wouldn't be me and that would that's what i would say you need to leave him you need to leave him because let's just justify you really do need to leave the person that's abusing you it's not healthy and it's not fair to use a person however each person has their own reasons of why it may take them a little bit longer than the next person to leave okay or some people just may not put up with the shit at all and the first time you fucking hit them upside their head they out the motherfucking door and they not looking back and i commend those people but then there are people that have put more time in a relationship like nia who have been with someone for three years and just find it hard to get away i'm sorry but honestly i have been in a domestic violence relationship in the past and i have not been hit on a daily basis but it's a tragic thing and it's really really hard and sometimes you can't you you try to take it but with me it was i'm not I let you not about to keep fighting me because i'm gonna bust your motherfucking ass back so you know what i'm saying i will fight back like i sent the nigga to the hospital a couple times you know what i'm saying like it is what it is but who even wants to keep fighting back a person should we have to do that yes great defend yourself uh, and fight for yourself but why should i have to go through that i mean I, i'm glad that we take up for ourselves and i'm glad that i did but i don't feel like i should have to defend myself on a daily basis or feel like i have to look over my shoulder all the time because you're fucking ignorant ass mean ass is beating on me like that's not cool um and unfortunately i know this is not right for me to say but karma is a motherfucker okay i'm not really sure how he passed away she did not stay but karma is a motherfucker okay and i'm pretty sure she didn't wish death on him but she feels a whole lot more relief that he's not around and you know what i get it you know what i'm saying i i can totally get it because that motherfucker that i just got rid of I feel the same way, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a relief. You know, after a while, a person wear and tear on you. It's like, okay, I can't take it no more. Leave me the fuck alone. And when they're gone, it's like, woosa, I can breathe again. I don't got to be worried about what you, I, I don't even got to see you no more. And I understand that is how she feels. She does not have to worry about him anymore in her life. And for those people in your family that, you know, don't know about his character, his real character, and they're blindfolded from his character, you don't really have to tell them, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, listen, he was a piece of shit. He used to beat on me and blah, 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 blah. You don't have to throw dirt on his name. However, maybe you may want to say something to your mom about him. You know, sit her down because if she's constantly mourning his death, not, not telling her 
Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like keeping a secret from her. But you know what I would do? The next time she mentions him, like, hey, you know, I miss Ryan so much. He was the best guy ever. You need to just sit her down and be like, you know, mom, I just there's something that I really need to tell you. And I feel like, you, you know, it's the best time now to tell you. I really didn't know how to tell you this before because I was afraid to. So it's not like you're really throwing dirt on her, on his name. But, you know, it's, a lot of times you don't tell people things because of being scared and being embarrassed. You know, a lot of people are embarrassed to to tell someone that yeah, I let this nigga beat on me. That's an embarrassing thing to some people. And though you should not be embarrassed, but you don't know how people judge you as a person. So to some people it is embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? To some people it's very embarrassing. And some people you're scared to tell. And me personally, if you have something on your chest and you need to get it out, it's not good to keep it bottled up inside. You know what I'm saying? I would I would honestly sit my mom down and let her know, you know, this is what I was going through with him. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that I'm happy that he's dead, but I, f I have an ease. I have a peace now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm hoping that he's at peace. But to the point where you're like, you don't want to be in another relationship anymore because of what has happened to you in the past. Girlfriend, I get it. It is very traumatizing when you have gone through something with someone who has just beaten on you and has just broken your spirits and broken you down. You are traumatized. You should not fear that. You should not be embarrassed by that. You should not worry about that. That is your instincts kicking in and letting you know listen put your wall up and guard yourself because nobody wants to go through that again and me personally for the things that you have gone through and the things that you have experienced i would personally take time off from being in a relationship with anybody and just try to find yourself because that takes a toll on a person being in a domestic violence relationship is really battering it's not just battering to your physical body but mentally it you are battered mentally you are beaten down you know what i'm saying and you have to build yourself back up you have to to build your spirits back up you have to build your self-esteem back up you have to build you up as a person and being with someone else is not going to help you because it's kind of like you covering that mask and you're just getting into another relationship and the next relationship that you get into may not be healthy because you just left left one that was really traumatizing and tragic so me personally i wouldn't worry about being in a relationship with anybody else you know what i'm saying i would worry about being in a relationship with myself with god or whoever the, the person that you have faith in whether it's nobody at all I would be more open and more honest with people you know what I'm saying and it starts right there you ain't got to tell everybody your business and don't feel like it's throwing dirt on his name but being honest and opening up is also a relief and it's also going to allow you to just be able to free some of the hurt and the pain that you already have you know what I'm saying I'm not saying tell the whole entire neighborhood but tell those people that you feel that's closest with you that can understand the reasons why that you didn't tell them, you know what I'm saying? The reasons why you went through this, you know what I'm saying? The person that was able to comfort you because these people that you can go to and talk to and open up to and tell honestly happening relationship are the people that can help you heal within yourself, you know what I'm saying? So that's where it all starts with, you know what I'm saying? Domestic violence is a horrible thing and it's a horrible thing for anybody to go through, regardless man or, or woman. It's a horrible thing to experience and if you've been in a domestic violence situation or relationship, then you can understand and relate to what I am, am talking about. Like, it's, it's the worst. And, like, I have never in my life have had to, like, you know... I really can't explain it, but I never thought of myself as ever being in a domestic violence relationship ever. But when I was in one, it was like, oh my God, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? What have I gotten myself into? And it's not that easy sometimes to just walk away. So I commend you. And unfortunately, he did pass away. But, you know, I really, you know, I really can't say anything, but karma is a motherfucker. But my first thing I would do is be honest. Be honest with yourself and be honest with those that really care about you and it's time to heal. You're right for not wanting to be with anybody else. Shit, I wouldn't want to be with nobody else the fuck either. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Motherfuckers would stay far, far, far away from a bitch like me. Because you never know what your reactions could be. You can either get into a unhealthy relationship with somebody else or you can get into a healthy relationship with somebody and you can start abusing them you know what i'm saying and turn the tables on them because you don't know how to react to the littlest things you're always on a defense mode so now it's time to take time for you and just be honest with those who are surrounding you and those who love you and share your experience with them and that will help you heal and in the meantime just work on you that's it just work on you girlfriend that's about it 
So on that note, ladies, let everyone know how you would feel or how you would deal with the situation. And I want to thank you guys once again for subscribing to my channel and getting me to 100,000 subscribers. A girl is thrilled, okay? And I love you guys, and I'll see you in a soon-to-come video. And stay diva and divalicious.